we'll move on now. And you wanted to make mention of this because I sent this to you. It's actually a few years old now, but I'd only just seen it. And it is the GCW Invisible Man match. And you watched it oh. and... Uh, I kind of liked it. Because <laughs> they did a, a really... For what I watched, let me give you the what it is, folks. It's the Invisible Man, which I booked before, by the way. Well, I was going to say this isn't this is an old thing, isn't it? In wrestling, oh yeah, if you really want to kill the town. Didn't you say that Ronnie Garvin did the Invisible Ronnie Man? Ronnie Garvin. He went to this show one time and didn't think he was going to get paid. And Ronnie told me this. He ran out to the ring, rang the bell, ding, 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 and did the announcing himself, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and he announced himself and facing. On his way to the ring right now, however he did it, uh, his weight is indeterminate or whatever. The invisible man, and he put it down, and then and he he wrestled or pretended to wrestle the invisible man, and uh, he beat him and they got out and rung the bell, ding ding ding, and the winner is Ronnie Garden. So he did that. So the promoter said, "Well, you didn't wrestle." You know, but he did wrestle. So I'm uh, question to Ronnie, did you get paid? He said, yeah, I got paid. I said, what about the other guys? He said, well, I didn't do it for them. I did it for myself, I guess. But he told me that story. Plus, I had seen The Invisible Man. I'm a big fan of The Invisible Man. He was on, and uh, Sabio was talking about this today, Titani's Del Ring. Mm -hmm. That's where I first saw the Invisible Man, I was, like, astonished. I was like this, what the hell? But, and it's been an old joke in wrestling for years, wrestling the Invisible Man. And they had an Invisible Man on that show, so. So when you showed me this tape of, G, what is it, GCW? Yeah, it's like Game Changer Wrestling. I think they do quite a lot Game of Changer Wrestling. Stuff, yeah. And they have their little studio or their little arena. It's packed in. They got to have two, three hundred people there anyway. And they were loud. And it was almost like the fans were coached to do this. And you could probably have a few of them. You could put out their starters, but they did a good job with it. It's so, just, is that a thing in, in wrestling where you put a few people in the crew? Cause you know, like if you're filming a sitcom or something, like yep. an in-studio sitcom, you've got a few like plants in the audience to laugh at the right places. Have you ever known that to happen in wrestling, where they've been plants in the audience to cheer at the right place and sort of like try and uh, get the crowd going in the right direction? Well, I think I've seen some plants, but they went in the opposite direction. <laughs> they sit there like this sometimes. That's not good. We hate you. You need to leave. But no, most of the companies I work with are too cheap to hire anybody like that. You know, half their talent sometimes works for nothing. Some of the referees, but, you know, we say how low rent that is. But if you were a comedian wanting to be a, a big star comedian, you go, you'll work clubs. You won't get a dime for it, but you're testing out your material. So I figure it's the same way with wrestling. You know, you don't you you don't work in front of a lot of people. You don't make any money, but you do it to get experience. And promoters know that. Excuse me, <coughs> folks. I've been sicker than a dog the last couple of weeks. Caught a summer cold. Still not over it. But uh, going back to my wrestling analogy, people work for nothing, and they will drive. I've known guys to drive six hours four of them to be in a tag match against each other. And they drive back. They just pitch in for the gas, but they get the experience and you're only going to be young, young once. So take advantage of it before you get to WWE or AEW. You got to kind of know what's going on and you got to get your feet wet somewhere. So that's the way guys do it. So are we going to see this uh, Invisible Man clip you no, have? No, no. I think it's a bit too new uh, for us to use. Uh, I've got some clips for the next oh. episode on Tuesday. I'm sorry. So, <coughs> also, it's the Invisible Man. What's there to see? 
But I'll tell oh, you yeah, what, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link, I'll tell put a link them, on for people. But, tell them where it is, where they can find this. Oh, uh, just Google GCW Invisible Man, you'll be able to find it. I'll put a link on the video if I remember. Um, but, you you got to watch this, yeah. folks. This, I'm going to get them a lot of views yeah, here. You, so. you, said, you said it was, or did you say, that it was the best Invisible Man match you'd ever seen? Uh, yes, uh, he's really improved. He, <laughs> he really has. And he's work, the Invisible Man is actually working against his brother, Called Invisible Stan. I'm just telling you. Mm. So that gives you a little background on it. So when you tune in, you've already been briefed on the background of it. So, and it's about five minutes long, but it's, I, I'm amazed by how the crowd reacted to it. And uh, that's, that's a, tr that's a trained crowd. 